Hey everyone, I'm James, the creator of Plague Inc. the board game, and I'm here today to give you a overview into the game and explain some of the rules, how the game works, and also play through a couple of turns so that you can really get a feel for the game. The game can be played by two to four players, or five players if you have the fifth player expansion, but for the purposes of today we're going to go with a two player game as this will make sure that everyone's able to easily see what's going on and we can keep everything on the camera. So let's get rid of these diseases here. So we're going to be playing with the red disease here and also the yellow disease here. Now, one thing that's really important to note is that all of these components are prototypes. These are not the final components for the game. Uh, this is just so that you can get a feel for, for how it works. Um, and also, this isn't really how the game would normally look when you're playing. I've rearranged it so that we can fit everything on the camera. I've put both players above each other, whereas normally each player would have their evolution slide in front of them. And we also have a card mat to keep the cards tidy. The game typically takes 60 minutes to 90 minutes, depending on how many players are playing and also how familiar people are with the game. So let's get started. Um, we will infect the patient zero for both players, first of all. So the red player is going in South Africa. And we'll put that there and place a plague token on it. And then the yellow player is going in South Korea. So we'll put that there, put a yellow plague token there. There are two key parts to Plague Inc, really. What you, you have the world board here, which has country cards placed on it throughout the game. And the players are trying to infect countries and uh, gain advantages by placing tokens in the correct places and outmaneuvering opponents by placing these plague tokens, which are used to represent their disease and show which countries they've infected. So you're, you're infecting countries on the world board, but the second part of it is the evolution slide. Each player has their own evolution slide, which is used to represent the genetic makeup of their disease. And you can add new traits and symptoms to the disease in order to let your disease gain new abilities and behave differently. So everything you do on the evolution slide significantly changes how your disease behaves and what it can do on the world board and so you need to be looking at the world board trying to work out okay is there an opportunity for me to evolve a specific symptom or what are my opponents doing do I need to be worried about them doing that is there a niche I can try and exploit so the, you have these the, the evolution slide fitting into the world board and impacting how it all works as well as so you have the world board here you have a country deck up here pile of trait cards, pile of event cards, and then each player gets their evolution slide, plague tokens, and their starting hand of trait cards, which we'll come to in a moment. So let's start with the red player, I think. We normally decide, we normally decide who goes first by seeing who washed their hands most recently, but for the sake of this playthrough, we'll just pick red. So red will start on zero DNA, and yellow will start on one DNA. The aim of the game is to get as many DNA points as possible by the time the world collapses and there are no country cards left here. And by giving the second player an extra DNA, it just helps make sure there's no first player advantage. So you want to become the ultimate plague by having the most DNA points. Each player's turn will typically have five key things that they do on it, and there's a summary of these on the side of your evolution slide. And we're going to go through each of these phases as the red player takes their turn. So the first thing that the player does is the DNA phase. This is when players get DNA points based on how many countries they've infected and control. You control a country by having the most tokens in that country. If there's a tie, then both people control the country. So, red controls South Africa, so they get one DNA point for that, to move the DNA points marker up. They also get an extra DNA from a bonus DNA ability that they have on their evolution slide. 
We'll talk more about abilities later, but as long as that's visible, they get an extra DNA point. The next phase is the country phase. This is when players choose one of either the face-up countries or a random one from the top of the pile and place it on the world board. At the start of your game, your disease is weak and unspecialised and you need to ideally choose a country that's in the same continent as you so that you can infect it easily. Unfortunately, there are no countries here which are based in Africa, so Red is going to take a random card and see what we get. We've drawn the UK, so we'll pop the UK down in Europe. And what's interesting about the UK is that it has an airport and a seaport, and we'll talk more about those in a bit. The next phase is the evolution phase. This is when you choose a trait card from your hand that you might want to evolve. All of these cards have different names and they all have different traits on them. This one gives you an infectivity, this one gives you waterborne heat resistance, and all of these change the way that your disease behaves. You start the game with two co with, with core traits, so we have two infectivity and one lethality here. And then you also have five evolution spaces, which you can place additional trait cards on to make your disease stronger. In order to place a trait card on an evolution space, you have to pay the DNA cost in the top right corner. So some of these are more expensive than others because they're giving you multiple traits at the same time. For now, to start off with, Red is going to get a sore throat. And that means that everybody it infects is now having a sore throat, so is South Africa. And Red needs to pay two DNA points for that, so we move the DNA cost back again. One very important thing to note is that at the end of the game, when the final scores are calculated, you get the DNA points that you have on your evolution slide added back onto your score, so you never lose anything by evolving. You had the abilities that I mentioned briefly before. If you cover up an ability slot, then you can no longer use it. So it's normally best to start off placing them on the empty evolution spaces before going elsewhere. So now that we've evolved a sore throat, it's time to actually do some infection and spread some of that lovely red plague around the world a bit. At the start of your infection phase, you count how much infectivity you have, and red has three infectivity traits. And that means that you place three plague tokens this turn. There are two rules that determine where you can place a plague token. The first is that you must be climate resistant to the country you want to infect. Now, the countries on the board so far have black city hexes, which means that they have a neutral climate, and you can always infect a country with a neutral climate. However, some countries, like if we take Russia, for example, have a cold icon inside their city spaces, or, like Mexico does, a hot sun icon. And that means that you have an extreme climate here, and they can only be infected if you have acquired the correct resistance on your evolution slide. I think, actually here, we had, yeah, delirium. So, here is a heat resistance trait. If red had a heat resistance trait here, they would be able to infect hot countries, but they don't have that at the moment. So that's climate resistance. The second rule that you must meet is the connected rule. You must be able to reach the country that you're trying to infect. You are always connected to countries that are in the same continent as your disease. So here, because red is in South Africa, it would be connected to any country in Africa. Unfortunately, there are no other countries there at the moment, but that will change. The other way of spreading is from continent to continent using either aeroplanes or boats. And this is where these little icons representing airports and seaports come into play. If you infect a country with an airport and you have an, in, an air, air transmission trait on your evolution slide, then you are also connected to any other country with an airport. And I think we had one here. Yes, yeah, so... Here, the air transmission trait gives us the airborne 
ability. And that would mean that we were connected to the UK via airports. Unfortunately, we didn't evolve that this turn, maybe next turn, so we aren't connected to the UK yet. So, we have three tokens to place because of our infectivity, and we can only reach South Africa. So, Red is going to place its three plague tokens down in South Africa. The final phase is the death phase, and that is when countries that are fully infected can try to be killed. Now, South Africa is not fully infected because it still has an empty space, so we'll leave the death phase for now and come back to that later. Now, the yellow players turn. They do the same thing. So, DNA, they control South Korea, and they get a bonus DNA, so that's two DNA for them. Next, they need to choose a country. And at this point, let's have a quick look at the trait cards to see if there's a certain tactic that they might want to follow. So they have water transmission, which is quite interesting, because South Korea has a port, and Indonesia also has a port. So, with waterborne, that would let them infect Indonesia. There's also cold resistance, which would let them infect Russia, because it's already in Asia. However, that costs four, and we don't have four yet. So I think waterborne could be the way to go. So the yellow player will choose Indonesia and put that down. And then refresh the country with a new one. Oh, there's China coming along. Now the evolution phase, and as I said, I think we'll evolve water transmission here so that we can start spreading a bit further. And now it's the infection phase. Yellow has two infectivities, so they can place two tokens. Now, they could place them in South Korea, but that's not really going to do anything for them at this stage. Whereas, if they use their waterborne trait to get into Indonesia, then that gives them access to a whole new continent, and it lets them get more DNA during the next DNA phase. So we're going to put one in Indonesia, and also the UK has a port. So the yellow player could also infect the UK, and now... The yellow is really spread around, and you're going to be able to start farming some significant DNA next turn. Death phase, no countries are fully infected, so nothing happens with death. Now it's the red player's turn again. So the red player still only controls South Africa, so one DNA plus the bonus, another DNA. Country card. However, we are thinking of getting air transmission, which is going to open up the UK. And there's also China there, which is quite interesting. So I think for the country card, we'll choose China. Evolution. We'll get air transmission so that the red plague can start to spread, share some sore throats in other places. You need to pay for that. And now it's the infection phase. Red has three infectivity, so that's three tokens. So, now we can finally get out of Africa and start to spread a bit. I think we'll start off putting one token in China to get access to Asia. Now that we've gone in Asia via our airport, we are now connected to all other countries in Asia. So, we could put a token in South Korea if we wanted to, and then we'd be able to be um, joint controlled to South Korea, getting more DNA in the future. However, the other alternative is that we put it in the UK. Because if we put two tokens in the UK, then we prevent the yellow player from getting a DNA because they no longer control it. And because there are only four total cities in the UK, we guarantee that we are always going to have control of the UK because yellow can only put one more token down and then it would be a tie. So we'll put them in the UK. Death phase, nothing happens. Now it's the yellow player again. So the yellow player controls South Korea and Indonesia, but not the UK anymore. So that's one, two, plus the bonus, three. One, two, three. Country card. So Pakistan is in Asia. We're wanting to kind of get a bit more presence in Asia. That could be useful. We could also take Russia because of the cold resistance that we've got there. And Russia, because it's cold, Red wouldn't be able to infect them, so that's also tempting. But do we want to evolve cold resistance this turn, or would we rather get, say, some sweating so we can place more tokens? I think for now, we will take Russia, because that's going to give us a cold place that we can use in the future, maybe. 
And now evolution, so we could evolve cold now and then have Russia as a little place to ourselves to get some DNA points. But at the same time, we need to start putting down more tokens because red is currently more infectious than us. And if we're not careful, they're going to run away with the game. So I think we'll get sweating for now, which is two, and we can keep cold for later. That now means we can place three tokens down this turn. So we should probably put one down in the UK just to make sure that we at least have shared control of it there, otherwise red will take it over. And now we've got two tokens left. We could put them in Indonesia, South Korea or China. We definitely want to put at least one in China so that we have shared control. And if we put down a second one, we'll stop red getting an extra DNA for it. So let's do that. Now it's the death phase and the UK is fully infected. So that means it can now try to be killed. We do this using the death dice. You have to roll a number that is less than or equal to your lethality. And yellow coney has one lethality. It's not very deadly. It's a watery, sweaty disease, but it's not that serious. So to kill the UK, we're going to have to roll a one. Let's see if we can do it. No. So the UK survives this turn, lucky escape, and yellow will get to roll again for it next turn. As the game goes on and it becomes more important to kill countries, you'll want to add more lethality traits to your evolution slide so that you're able to kill countries a lot easier. Now it's the red player's turn again. The red player gets one DNA here, one DNA here, no DNA for China, so one, two, plus the bonus, three. Country card. So there are a number of country cards. I mean, Pakistan could be good, but we've already got a lot of tokens to put down. Let's have a look at the cards that are available at the moment. So it would be quite useful, potentially, to try and kill the UK before yellow does. So we might end up evolving a fever this turn. So we don't want to get rid of our cards. So let's take Pakistan and place it there. Oh, Greenland, crowd, crowd favourite. Um, so now we're going to evolve a fever and increase our lethality. And infection, we have three infectivity, so we place three tokens down. Now, where do we want to go with this? China is very important to try and kill because it's one of the largest countries in the game. So I'm tempted to put a few more tokens down there and take control of it again. But then we could also put a token in South Korea or Pakistan and get another country giving us DNA. But if we put it in China, um, no, we'll put one in South Korea and have shared control of that country. Now it's the death phase again, and this time red has two lethality. And so it will try to kill the UK because red also controls it. Yes. The UK dies. That was unscripted. I was going to have to cheat it otherwise, but wonderful. That's exactly what we wanted to have happen. So the UK has fallen. And now what happens is that each player gets a DNA point for each token they had in the country. So red has two tokens. They get two DNA points. Yellow has two tokens. They get two DNA points. The second thing is that each player in the country gets an event card. We'll talk a bit more about event cards in a moment, but they're very powerful cards which let you either give your own disease a boost or um, slow down or in in interact with somebody else's disease. So we'll keep those there for now. And the final thing that happens is that the tokens are returned to the player and the card is kept by the person who killed it for end game score bonuses. So I'm going to stop the playthrough there, but I'm now going to just sort of talk about a few of the concepts that have just popped up as, as we were playing there. So first of all, event cards. Event cards are things like genetic surge. During your turn, you may take four new trait cards or soap shortage. During your turn, you may place two extra tokens in a country you infect. And there are all sorts of unique event cards which let you do various things, bird migration, bombing infected cities, you can remove somebody's tokens from a country, infected refugees, lethal relapse, you can roll the dice again if it doesn't work your way you want it to. 
And every time a country dies, everyone in the, that country gets an event card. So it's worth spreading your disease a bit wider, even if you might not be able to control that country. Killing countries is also really important, A, because it gives you your tokens back, and as the game goes on, you might start running low on tokens, so you need to balance your infectivity and your lethality a little bit, otherwise you could find yourself with no tokens to place, and, and, it, and it's very hard for you to kill countries and get those tokens back, so you kind of need to be putting them down and then cashing them in at the same time. And also, you want to collect these dead countries because at the end of the game, there are very powerful bonuses which give people extra DNA depending on what they've been able to achieve with the game. So there's a six DNA bonus for the player who killed the most countries in a given continent. So you want to, there's almost this whole meta game of you want to try and be spreading across the world as wide as you can, killing countries in as many different continents as possible, whilst also remembering what your opponents have already done and deciding, is it worth me trying to go for that continent or should I be infecting a different continent? There are also bonuses for killing the largest country in the game. So you never know quite which countries are going to be available, but if China pops up, you know that's one that you really want to try and go for, if possible. So that's the end game bonus stuff. There are a few other strategic uh, things that I kind of want to touch on. Um, when you are taking a country card from the country um, phase, you don't have to place it on the world board. You can choose to discard it from the game instead. And that gives you two... Um, that, that's worth doing for two reasons. A, it might be a country that you want to prevent your opponents from having. So you can discard it and that removes it from the game. But also, when you discard a country, you also discard your trait cards and draw new ones. So, if you don't like your hand of trait cards, or you've run out of cards, then you want to discard a country card to get new ones. So we might decide to chuck away Australia, chuck away the trait cards, and then draw five new ones from there. However, if you like your current hand of trait cards, then you really don't want to discard a country card because you'd end up throwing them all away. So here we have a high lethality trait card which we could use. So that's the um, country discarding. Oh, one other thing that you can do, you can devolve a trait card off your evolution slide if you want to. However, you don't get the DNA points back for it. So it's only worth doing if you really need that space to evolve something else. Hopefully this has given you a bit of a taste of how the game works. You, you're, we're, we're still quite early on here, but you'll see that more countries get played in and you've got to be analysing the world and saying, OK, right, I think it's worth me getting cold resistance at this point because there's a lot of cold countries coming along. Uh, my opponent's investing in heat resistance, so I want to try and not have many hot countries on the board. And you're trying to just position yourself to get as much advantage as possible from the current state of the world. And with our more players in the game, obviously you have more country cards coming onto the board, and so the world grows in a different sense, and you have people competing for different continents in different parts of the world and trying different evolutionary tactics. At the end of the game, you count up the score on the trait cards, you add that to your DNA score, and then you do the bonuses, and by then you'll find out who has the highest number of DNA points, and they are the winner of the game, the ultimate plague. Um, yes, and that's it. So I hope you found this useful, and if you want to know more about the rules, then check out the Kickstarter page, which has got the rule book as a PDF on there, so you can go into more detail on what I've explained and see exactly how it works for yourself. And Yes, thank you for watching me infect the world, and I hope you also play the game in the future and enjoy it too. Bye.